Hello and welcome to one of our Ionic tutorial videos using the Ionic Creator. Now in this lesson we are learning about how to work with various types of controls and how we can use multiple pages inside of our application so we can collect data from the controls on one page and then pass that data to another page where we can then either do some processing, uh, make some decisions, and ultimately display the results of the information that we received, so some output to the user. So I'm starting in our Ionic Creator. I've started a just a blank project. I named it Input Output, as you can see up here at the top. And I'm just starting with a regular blank page that we're going to add some controls to. Now in this app, um, I'm just gonna create a little scenario here. Um, I'm gonna say we're gonna make an app where a user could order a t-shirt. And so I want to give you some various controls to work with so you can kind of see how different ones work. And we can see what that data looks like when we start passing it around. So to get started with our UI, I'm going to add some controls. So the first control I want to add is um, some kind of drop down. So let's come down here. And I'm going to grab the select. And I'm going to call this size. So up here in the title, I'm going to use size. So we need to know what kind of t-shirt uh, or what size they're going to want. And I also want to show you how we can programmatically load data into some of these controls. We could always hard code this data in and you can add an option and pre-fill all these items into the list. But I thought it would be more beneficial to show you how to do it in the JavaScript. So let's add some other controls. What kind of other things will we want? I'm going to add a list. Um, let's say we have some predefined types of t-shirts that we could order inside of our app. Now there's a couple of different list items down here. You see there's like a list item, there's a container list item, thumbnail, icon, avatar, regular list. It depends on what you're doing with the list, which control that you ultimately want to use. What I'm going to do here is add in a list divider. This is going to allow me to kind of give a little heading to my list. So this is going to be um, type of t-shirt. And this is just some text that the user will see. Now you could choose if you wanted um, like a thumbnail one. Maybe you could add in a graphic or something like that. I'm going to use a radio button list. So I'm going to add in our radio list here. So our title is ultimately what is displayed, and you could come up with some various t-shirts here, but I'm just going to say like a blue graphic, and then another radio item, and we could say this is a green graphic, and then another one with a red graphic. Okay, let's add some more. One of the, uh, what I consider to be more useful controls that really does nothing on the page is the spacer. Um, I think I just blew right past it. So the spacer allows us to just put blank space on the in the area and you can kind of adjust how much space but that way if you don't want your controls sitting on top of each other you can use a spacer in here to make sure. So let's just do like a regular input box because uh, maybe they want to leave us a note. So we can put in here that this is a, a note um, you can see here you can choose the type of text if you know it's going to be a phone number or an email address or a password or something like that. You can always change the type. Um, if you want some kind of placeholder text or something, you can do that here. You can also choose the label style if you want it floating. Um, you know, stacked is going to push it to the top. Floating is going to float it over the top, whichever way you want to dress that up. But that way our, uh, our customer could leave us a note. Let's also play with toggle. Now toggle is kind of a true false on off kind of button. So let's say uh, rush shipping, like question mark. Do you want rush shipping? Um, so we can, and then you can um, you change color on that if you want. And we can look at our preview as we build this and kind of play. You can see there's that blue, like I said, if you want to change that color. Right now there's nothing in our drop down list, um, but we can see these radio buttons. It's only going to let us select one because that's how radio buttons work. We could type a note in the note box, right? And then we're going to want a button, right? Some kind of submit button. So we'll grab a button uh, and then we will type in the text um, order. 
right? So this will be our order button that they'll click on uh, when, when they're ready to order. Now, one other thing I'm gonna add in here, cause I wanna show you how you can kind of check that your stuff is working okay, is I'm gonna throw a paragraph, uh, just kind of right in here. And I'm gonna add in a way for us to check that our, our controls are working the way that we want. So I'm gonna put in here, like we're gonna have a size, we're gonna have a type, uh, we're gonna have a note, and we're gonna have rush shipping. So we wanna know if our controls are working as expected. Now, um, since I, the Ionic framework is built on top of AngularJS, we use what are called template tags in order to retrieve the data that we are ultimately collecting from our UI controls. These template tags go in side of double curly braces and then they we can either use um, just kind of like a basic naming model or we can use an object model. Now I'm gonna set this up to use an object model because that is the more acceptable way to do this. And so I'm gonna have an object named data and then I'm gonna have properties of data. So I'm gonna have like data.size, right? And that's what's gonna hold our size information in our list. We're gonna have data.type. Uh, Oops. We're gonna have data.note. And you could name your object whatever you wanted. If you wanted to name it pizza or something, <laughs> t-shirt, it doesn't matter what you name it. Um, and then we're going to do data dot rush shipping. Okay, so you're probably asking yourself this question, well, how do these controls know that they are these things, right? How does it know that it's type, note, whatever? This is where we would hook it up on the various controls themselves so that the control knows, hey, this I belong to this group. I am going to be getting my data from here. So let's start with size. There's two things we're going to do with size. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell it, hey, you belong to the data object size property. And we do it over here under the Angular Directives section. So we're going to click Add, and we're going to do ng hyphen model. Now in Angular, uh, ng model is ultimately our framework for all of the items in our, remember, our model view controller, all of the items we ultimately want to declare as usable data model items. So here is where we're going to declare that this is data.size. And then what I want to do is set up basically an array in my JavaScript that size is going to populate from. So we're going to come down to our code section, right? We're going to expand this and I'm going to pull this up so that you can see this. Um, it's not really a good way to make this text larger in this little editor. So I'm going to zoom this video in so that you can see this a little better. Okay, so inside of our, this is our page right here, and you could even name the page something else if you wanted to, to make sure that you keep them straight between the first one and the second one that we're going to make. Uh, but this function right here, this is ultimately the page controller. Because remember, our, um, our creator, our Ionic creator, is doing a lot of the background work for us. So it's hooking up the page, it's creating the HTML for us based on the controls that we put in the UI. And then it's hooking up our controllers and our routes and everything for us. So here is where I'm gonna set up an array and everything that we're doing in our Ionic code is, is gonna happen on the scope because the scope is, is basically where all of our active data lives. So scope dot, and I'm gonna call it sizes is my array. And then standard JavaScript syntax equals square brackets, right? This is my array. And then because we are working with um, essentially like an object notation, we're gonna have open curly, close curly, and then commas in between each one of these curly brace sections that I have a size for. So we're gonna have an ID. Um, let's say we offer an extra small, sorry, these go in single quotes. comma, label, right? And so this is essentially what they look like. So comma, oops, that was a period, comma, 
and then open curly, close curly. We're gonna have another ID. Let's say this is a small. I'm bad with my keyboard today. Label small. Now I'm doing this IDs and labels. ID is ultimately what we use behind the scenes, and then label is what will be displayed. You could just use a one size fits all property for these if you wanted. Totally fine. I could use like XS, S, M, and stuff for IDs. Uh, and then my label could ultimately be what do I what do I want to display? Totally cool too. All I'm doing is defining the different sizes that I want to have inside of my array. So that when I hook this up to my list, it will be able to populate the items inside. <laughs> Talking and typing. And we'll be able to pass that data over to the other page where we'll display this information. I'm going to take the hyphen out of that. And all of a sudden I started doing double quotes. Shame on me. I did, I did double quotes up here too. Okay, on the last curly, we don't have a comma, but on the end of the square bracket, we put a semicolon. So we have this nice array, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. So that's the sizes of shirts that we're going to carry in our store. So to connect this, this array that we defined on the scope, named sizes, to our size dropdown, we have to come back over to our Angular Directive section. We're going to add another directive. And this is going to be an ng options. So if we go look at our documentation, right, we could go pull it out of the Angular reference and see that ng options is used to dynamically generate a list of option elements for the select element using an array or object, right, da 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 da. So this is ultimately what we want to use to take this array that we've built and populate this drop down list. Now, the syntax for this is a little tricky. Again, go dig through the ng options page that I just showed you, and you can see how this, is, how this should be written. So we have two properties inside of our sizes array. We have an ID and we have a label. And basically, ng options is going to iterate through our array and display those in this list. And we want to do it so that the label is displayed, but the ID is what is passed over when ultimately we collect all this data and send it off. So this is going to be um, size.id as size.label. Right, are you following me so far? For size dot or not dot size for size in sizes. Now <laughs> it's this box doesn't quite fit it all in there, but that, that is ultimately the syntax for ng options. Size ID as our size label for size in sizes. Kind of like a for each statement if you're familiar with those. But right now we should be able to, you can save all your code, make sure your stuff's all saved, and let's go check it out. We'll come into the preview, click the drop down. We should see our labels, right? And that's why I took the hyphen out of the ID so that we could tell the difference. The extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. But as I click on these, you'll notice down here in that template tag that I set up for size, because we told the size drop down list that it is ultimately part of the data uh, object and that its property size would be coming from this drop down list and we could display it down here, but we're displaying IDs. So we can see when we select extra small, extra small, the label is what is displayed, but extra small, the ID is what we're holding on the data side that will ultimately pass over to our um, other item or other page. 
Okay, so hopefully that hasn't been a complete overload of information for this video. Make sure to check out you know, subsequent videos where we're gonna finish this app together, get our information from the radio buttons, note, toggle, be able to show that they're all attached to our data elements that we have declared on the model, and then we'll start looking at how we can pass that data over to another page. But again, uh, when you're working with this Ionic framework, um, if you're not already familiar with the Angular JS framework, that is ultimately where to start with your education. So you'll want to go back over and look at some of the Angular JS. Um, maybe write a couple of things in Angular before you really start to tackle the Ionic stuff, because it does all tie together, even though we're kind of doing it in this strange UI. So as always, feel free to send questions, and um, if you're ready, go ahead and move on to the next video so we can finish.